APC's new chairman resumes. Stakeholders are charging to strengthen the party. PDP and other opposition political parties strategize ahead of AKT and Oshun governorship election. More presidential hopefuls emerge from different political platforms, display credentials to Nigerians. Also on Political Update today, civil society organizations give pointers on successful elections. We have this and more stories on the show. I'm Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. Nigeria and the Republic of Niger have resolved to collaborate more effectively in the new onslaught against insecurity undermining the efforts at achieving peace and stability in the sub-region. This was when President Buhari and uh, had high-level engagement with his Nigerian counterpart, uh, President Muhammad Bazoum. 30th March 2022 is another day of history in the life of the All Progressives Congress. It is the day when the newly elected national chairman, former governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullahi Adamu, officially takes over the mantle of leadership. In his inaugural speech, he emphasized the need for loyalty from party members, particularly his colleagues, members of the National Working Committee. I promise you the spirit of collective leadership, teamwork, I cannot deliver alone. If you bring any division tendencies, we will deal with it. And this party is bigger than any single member. So that's a spirit with which I take the leadership of this party. This marks the end of the 21-month rule of the 13-member Kiatika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee under the leadership of Governor May Malabuni of Yube State. Both the former and the new leader have acknowledged the efforts by stakeholders, particularly leader of the party, President Muhammad Buhari, for keeping APC as a united family and ensuring a peaceful leadership transition. I'm at the point when this party will soon start its nomination process. It is all about human management, the, um, the ability to manage the situation is what will keep this party together. Our main point of call is how we handle the election security, so how we win the election in 2023. The new national chairman commiserated with victims and families of a passenger train attacked by terrorists along Kaduna Abuja corridor and solicited enhanced collaboration amongst the citizens in the fight against terrorism. At the moment, the attention is on terrorists, terrorists, terrorists. I think we will better look beyond the terrorists. Something is amiss somewhere. That was the new chairman of the APC, former Governor of Nasarawa State Senator Ablai Adamu speaking there after assuming office. Uh, we'll bring you uh, the story with the President and the President of uh, Niger Republic later on in the course of the program. Moving on now, uh, the Chairman of the People's Democratic Party Zoning Committee and Benue State Governor Samuel Otom says the committee will come out with an acceptable position for all. The meeting of the PDP Zoning Committee, according to Governor Samuel Otom, has been peaceful without any tension. Although yet to be concluded, the meeting adjourned to Tuesday next week to continue deliberations. Governor Otom explains that at the end of it all, the committee will deliver results that everybody will accept and the party will go ahead as one big family to win the 2023 elections. Meanwhile, the Taraba State Governor, Darius Ishaku, has thrown his weight behind the consensus presidential candidate ahead of the People's Democratic Party primary slated for May 28. The governor made the pledge while playing host to the trio of Dr. Bukola Saraki, Governor Samin Waziri Tambual and Bala Mohammed of Sokoto and Bauchi states, who are contesting the presidential ticket on the platform of the PDP. We only have to produce one person. Let us all together hold our hands together and agree that this person should be our leader. And then we'll all fall in line. Right, talking about uh, PDP presidential hopefuls, uh, one of them is here joining us now. Is one of the presidential hopefuls of the PDP, Dr. Nwachuku Anakwenze. 
Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've been you. hearing this name uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, just yesterday, you paid the 41 million uh, for them, uh, uh, for the PDP. The PDP is asking for, you know, a special mistress and all that. But uh, give us a little background. Let's get to know you more, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of uh, your antecedents and in terms of, uh, um, you know, your credentials getting to this point. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Nwachukwa Nakwenzi. I'm a medical doctor in Amer from America a Nigerian medical doctor from America. I left here at the age of 19 to went, went to America to get education, and I was very successful. And then I got my PhD in medicine. I also have master's in business administration. I have master's in public health. So the Americans trained me very well. I can run any business. I can run refinery, oil, motor company business. And I'm a medical doctor. I know how about healthcare, how to deliver first class healthcare like I would like to be in Nigeria. I've been the leader of Nigerian groups. As soon as I left medical school, I started going to Nigerian meetings. I've been chairman of Organization of Nigerian Unity, chairman of uh, chairman of Nigerian World Affairs Council. I'm, chair, I'm the head of all the boards in diaspora and head of Anambra State Association. I've been doing work for Nigerian people for free for more than 35 years. I like to serve. I like to lift the regular people up. All right, let's, uh, you've given us quite, uh, you know, an impressive resume. At the moment, before you came to Nigeria, uh, you know, to pursue this uh, ambition, uh, at what point, what were you doing exactly uh, before eventually, you know, coming back home? Um, I'm a medical doctor of a large, I'm a, of large medical group. I'm the chairman CEO of Global Care Medical Group. 4,000 medical doctors, 20 hospitals, 500 clinic, primary care sites. We can pro we provide healthcare for the whole California. Like we can provide healthcare for half of Nigeria. 4,000 medical doctors, every specialty, eyes, nose, throat, prostate, having baby doctor. We that's what I do for since 1993. I've been running this group. And it's mostly white people and then Chinese, Indians, Latinos. I'm able to work with everybody and deliver first class care. All right, since you've come in now, have you been, uh, you know, networking, especially uh, to, uh, you know, for Nigerians to begin to know exactly what you are, you know, about, and uh, especially as the race for 2023 begins to gather momentum? Yes, um, I've come, I've started in the East, and I talked to my people in the village, that I went to Enugu. This whole week, we've been to Castina, we've been to Kanu and Kaduna. We've met with all the people, and they're all enthusiastic about working with us because of the programs I have. And then the, I want to say that the reason I came is all the Igbos in diaspora and Nigerians, particular, particularly the Yorubas, they all contributed and said, I need to go because they want to have quality person running the country. It's more than 10,000 medical professionals. If I get in, they will come back. They're tired of being there. They want to come back to serve Nigeria. All right, uh, looking at the voting blocks, uh, which ones have uh, tickled your fancy in terms of uh, the immediate impact, youths, women, uh, in terms of your program? My main agenda is to help the youth and then women. My main is to help the youth because that's where our strength will come from. Right now, the, what you have is government that just cut, shear, cut, chop, shear. And the, you people have been abandoned and neglected seriously. And we are going to, uh, we, we will have doom unless we take care of the young people. So I have very serious agenda for the youth about educating them. And the ones that want to go to PhD, I'll send them. And the ones that want to do handwork, I will have skill acquisition center everywhere for free, where they will learn to do plumbing, solar, electrical, um, uh, painting. Everybody doesn't have to be a doctor like me. I will pay for it with Nigerian money. I will cut out 30% of the budget to sponsor youth. And when they come out, if they don't have money to purchase the equipment they need to start their shop, I will give them loan, like in America. What I'm trying to do is what we are doing in America. I will give the young loan to buy the equipment. They will start paying after two years. All right, let's uh, give it a pause so that we can take a few uh, stories. Former Kano State Governor Rabi Umosa Kwankoso has emerged as the uh, national leader of the new Nigeria People's Party. 
It's the National Convention of the New Nigeria People's Party held the day after former Kano State Governor Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso resigned from the PDP and joined the new party. The National Convention produced a 39-man new National Executive Committee of the party, with Kwankwaso's loyalists clinching top positions. Emerging as the national chairman of the NNPP is Professor Rufai Alkali, a political scientist, former presidential political advisor, and former national publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party. What we have to do is to go back to our own states, our local governments, and what? And sure, not only we need to start ourselves and our families. But you have to tell each and every Nigerian to register with MNPP. At another national convention, Ambassador Isaac Ude has emerged national chairman of the National Rescue Movement, founder and immediate past national chairman of the party, and now chairman board of trustees. Senator Saidu Dansadao said the party is on its way to winning more elective seats in future elections. Dr. Nwachukwa Nakwenze is still with us, but we'll take our second conversation, after which we'll return to him. Member representing uh, Ikwa Nouma here, North Unwaya South, Federal Constituency of Abia State, says uh, APC will be stronger after the conclusion of the party's national convention. Honorable Nuibo uh, also enumerated his interventions in his constituency. He joined us earlier for a chat. Absolutely. Uh, it seemed like there was going to be an Amageddon. But uh, to the glory of God, everything happened peacefully, successfully, and productively. So we are stronger, a reposition to deliver. And uh, after that, uh, you know, process, uh, mm -hmm. have there been, you know, talks and all that? Uh, because now you'll be expecting the escorts to hit the ground running. They have actually hit the ground running. They've started and. Uh, they are holding consultations and trying to sort out maybe some, you know, in some states where there were difficulties and all that. So they are already working. And I have no doubt we'll say about that in less than maybe a week or two, we'll start with the sell-off forms and conclude that rapidly to get into primary exercise. Let's come to you as, uh, you know, a representative of your people. Mm -hmm. One year uh, to the end of uh, the, to the expiration of uh, this uh, term and this tenure, uh, what will be some of the things that uh, you would like to beat your chest on and, uh, you know, perhaps uh, uh, in terms of your contract with your constituents? Well, thank you very much. I, I recall that a number, on a number of occasions when I came here, and was interviewed. I talked about running on the acronym of EAR. That's as far back as uh, 2014. EAR stands for Effectiveness, Accessibility, and Responsiveness. And I said so uh, then, and it still stands true to today, which is that I'll deliver on key issues, apart from legislation, which is the primary function of a legislator. Then there are other things as a developing nation in terms of projects and, uh, you know, uh, things that you are bringing to help the well-being of your people. So I've been able to do a whole lot. And of course, I know we don't have a, a enough time, but I can go through a lot of things that I've been able to facilitate in terms of projects. Why? Okay. Uh, well, Starting from uh, the first time I was elected, I was able to facilitate major erosion control areas. You are probably aware that in the southeast, gully erosion is a major menace, uh, which is coming out of climate change. And um, these erosion problems are affecting farmers and ordinary people, even travelers, because in areas where it cuts roads into two, you have to intervene, you have to look for a way to ensure that people are still able either to go to their farms or still pass through the road. So I was able to facilitate two major erosion control works. One in uh, Amankwe Zeleke, in Omaha South, and then another one in Ikuano, you know, all these are uh, within my federal constituency. And of course I know that there are well over 43 active erosion sites in my federal constituency as we speak. In my village alone, there are six. You know, so I was able to do all those. And I still have done uh, engineering and survey works on so many other ones, believing and hoping that the ecological fund and the federal government will intervene. In fact, there was one I moved two motions on, and that one involves 
pipeline where Roshan is cutting it. And then there's the danger of fire, you know, starting from there. I do hope that the federal government will truly intervene and get this thing sorted out. So apart from those ones, I was able to facilitate so many things in terms of electricity, you know, blocks of classrooms, skills acquisition. And of course, recently, um, we did things on empowerment, on poultry, galvanized cages, and that one turns, turned out to be perhaps the most successful because the recipients have been calling and talking of how that has helped them to move away from the unemployment you know, field because they're making money now without necessarily going to anywhere. They sell their eggs and also sell you know, the chicken. <laughs> All right, Honorable Sam Onuibo there from Ikwa and Umaya, North Umaya, Umaya South uh, Federal Constituency of Abia State. We still have Dr. Anna Kwenze, uh, presidential hopeful, uh, presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party here with us. Now, let's, uh, we're going to say a few words about uh, even the women constituency before we go into our next question. So let me allow you. Um, women are our mothers, our sisters, and our daughters. We are going to treat them properly, just like we treat men. They can get jobs based on credentials and qualification and experience. It's not going to be like, oh, I have to sleep with you so to get a job. It would not happen under my administration. It's just going to be on your qualification, regardless of tribe or religion. It will be, there will be nothing like that. It will be your ability to deliver. And oh. there will be no abusive relationships. Well, let's go quickly to uh, you know your uh, primary constituency, which is the southeast. Have you been able to begin to galvanize momentum uh, behind this vision? Of course, you have, uh, according to what you've told us earlier in the program, uh, you were uh, sponsored by Nigerians in diaspora to come and uh, be a part of uh, this process to throw your hat in the ring based on your credentials. But in the uh, south uh, east, have you been able to begin to you know galvanize interest you know in this vision? Yeah, I have the full support of our people. I've been serving them for 35 years. I'm the one that represents Ohane Zendibo in the whole diaspora. I come for meeting. Anytime they have meeting, I fly in to have meeting. They all know me. I have their support. They are the one that encouraged me to come. Because at a certain point, a lot of Nigerians and them are saying there's no quality Igbo person coming out. Where is the Igbo? If in, in February 4th, the Ifadifre came in Oka and Middle Belt Volume, South, South, people, they're all there. And they're saying, Igbo people come out. Where is the Igbo people? Where's the quality people? That's why they tell me to go from, from diaspora to go and fill in that spot. So I have the support of all our people. I've been serving them for 35 years. I'm part and parcel, just like if you're part of Afenifre for many, many years. So I have the support of my people. And I have a lot of support. I went to Kanu, they like my program, Kastina, they have my, they like my program and the a lot of the house people are joining our group and we're going to Yoruba land this week. We're going to go to Yoruba land starting from Tuesday. We're going to tour the whole of that place. All right. And how has it been in terms of responses? Uh, are excellent. you encouraged? Ex excellent. Everybody like my program. After we talk, you will like my program. I have an aggressive program for work, education, um, agriculture, medicine. I have an aggressive program. When you get to asking me, when I finish, you will, you will clap for me. Uh, doctor, this is, uh, we are talking Ma uh, March, now now April, uh, we're still going a whole hog for, uh, are you in terms of uh, stamina ready for the entire ego of this program? Yes, I'm ready. I've been, I've been working all my life. I've been, I've been traveling all my life. I, I go all over the world, Russia, Spain, South Africa to represent my people. So you are, you, you, so you are ready to go the full hog. We'll come for the final, uh, you know, your final statements uh, to Nigerians before we go on the show. But uh, let's take this one. The Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room has urged the Nigerian um, electoral umpire, INEC, to work towards improving its logistics arrangements and early commencement of polls in the upcoming elections. If you have a report for a particular polling... This is a strategy meeting on the forthcoming Ekiti and Oshun State governorship elections. It is at the instance of the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room. Stakeholders also reviewed the recent FCT area elections, where it described the exercise as generally peaceful across the six area councils. And that was a very, very serious election because it's about the people, the citizens of Nigeria, 
that are living within the FCT. Ahead of the Ikiti and Oshun State's governorship election, Situation Room noted that issues surrounding votes buying and selling are still of greater concern. And we thought that this is a good way to start by bringing colleagues from uh, Ikiti and also Oshun states so that we can prepare ourselves, we can look at how and how to engage, what kind of advocacy strategies, also catch up with them about what's on ground, what's going on in Ikiti, what's going on in Oshun. Situation Room and joint participants to ensure that the electorate are adequately sensitized towards better understanding of their civic responsibility. Right, that is about it uh, on uh, political update today. But before we go, our main guest, uh, Dr. Nwa uh, Chukwana is still here and uh, speak to his form on the People's Democratic Party National Secretariat uh, yesterday. Talk to Nigerians finally before we uh, close shop today. I'm here for our people. We want true democracy and freedom for all Nigerians. We want fair play for all Nigerians. We do not promote religious or ideological-based politics. We are here for, to carry all Nigerians along. If I have power, it wouldn't matter whether you're Muslim or Christian. Once you're qualified, you will be part of our team. We want a government that's free and fair to everybody, regardless of your race or your tribe or wh whatever you come from. I will carry everybody along. There will be no discrimination. There will be no nepotism. I will work with everybody in Nigeria. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Okechukwu and Akweze on Political Update, and thank you for being a part of the program. You know how we do it. Play your politics for the greater good of mankind, and uh, we're in the season now. Keep it locked on the Nigerian Television Authority, where we give you the very best of news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Bye-bye now. <laughs>